So we are live, uh, and by we, I mean myself and UFE Pro Christy Starr. Now, it's been quite a while since I did, uh, did one of these interviews, and I've been trying to connect with uh, Christy for some time, so finally it worked. Yes. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, all right, are you available now? Let's, let's make this happen. So, um, yes. yeah, kind of excited to talk to you because um, – you know, I think you're one of our more uh, passionate pros. Um, I think you and, 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 and Rob have been uh, amazing parts of the organization, but you also have um, kind of an interesting story. You've had to overcome a lot yes. um, to, make it, to make it to the stage um, in past years and especially this year, which we're going to kind of touch on. But um, first, I kind of wanted to ask you, how did you find UFE in the first place and what, like you, you were, you were a competitor with, um, with OPA before, right? Yes. So it's now CPA, but it was called uh, OPA back in the days. Right. So how did you find us in the first place? Um, so I had heard about um, UFE. Unfortunately, you didn't hear as much because everyone seemed to be pushing OPA because it's, Oh, you get to go to the Arnold. So you get to go to the Olympia, just this, this big production, you know? So unfortunately I didn't hear too, too much about UFE in the beginning and then um, started hearing a little bit more, seeing more posts. Um, and then I decided to attend a, a workshop. Oh man, that was probably, that was, that was years ago. So I think it was about 2014 that I went to a workshop and I, I got to hear about it and I knew it was for me, but for some reason in the back of my mind, I just wasn't done with OPA yet because I was getting very close to, uh, turning masters. So I wanted to give that a shot and be competing with people my age, 35 plus, instead of just against all the 20 year olds. Um, so I gave that another shot and I just realized more and more, no offense to the organization. We still um, have quite a lot of athletes that compete in it. I still do posing clients. Um, but I was just seeing even in the natural stream, a lot of um, drugs being used in the off season and stuff. So um, that's fine if people want to use it, but it's not something that I wanted to be going against. Um, so I started learning quite a bit more about uh, UFE and things that really impressed me about the organization was it seemed everyone was a family at the end of the day. Like uh, competitors, we all talk to each other in, in OPA, but we would get to shows and everyone was just so hardcore about competing. And I am as well. Like you're there at the end of the day, you work so hard on your physique, you want to win but it's about the whole experience and the people that you're meeting as well, whenever you're there. Um, another thing that, that really uh, piqued my interest was the different categories and the different types of posing. So I liked the fact that there was the quarter turns, it wasn't just the front and the back. So I could actually show off a little bit more of my physique. Um, fitness model was fun because you get to do the, um, the costume round with it, um, as well as the bikini round. So now you're getting on stage twice um, and my favorite, I am a bikini girl to heart, but I absolutely love the fitness uh, category for females because I love getting up on stage and flexing. That means the world to me. doesn't matter what place I come in, but just getting to flex and show off that physique on stage. Like how amazing is that? <laughs> so that really pulled me in seeing those uh, different categories and stuff. And I went and saw a show. Um, it was Dave's show and just wow, the audience screaming, um, just the energy that was at it, how friendly everyone was, great show, great announcing, good physique. Um, so it came down to, did I want to go to nationals that I was qualified for with uh, CP, or sorry, OPA, or did I want to make the switch over to UFE? And that's what I did. Uh, so that was in May 2017. I I uh, jumped on stage, did my first uh, competitions with UFE, uh, became pro at that show and absolutely loved it and have not looked back. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. And we're going to kind of get to the uh, the world championships in, in, in just a bit. Um, but you competed in the world championships last year. And, you know, that yeah. show brings competitors from all around the world onto the stage. What was that? Uh, what was that experience like for you last year? So I've done it uh, two years now. This will actually be my third year uh, doing it. I look forward to it every year. I'm already planning for next year even. <laughs> um, but it, it's just such a good experience because 
like I said, it is a, a true family. And there's people that I talk to from uh, the States, there's people I talk to from um, other uh, provinces in uh, Canada. I t you talk to people over in Europe and it's so nice because whenever you get here together, it's it's genuine. It's a genuine friendship. It's a genuine family. We've been supporting each other all along. And these are people that you're standing up on stage competing against. And everyone is just empowers other people. The empowerment towards women. No one's catty. No one is, um, oh, this person looks better than me. I'm not going to talk to them. Like I absolutely love it. And the support and the messages, even today alone, going through another one of my obstacles, I was getting so many messages. And it's from a lot of people on Instagram, my followers, my friends, but primarily like the UFE family that's messaging and saying, you've got this, you're so inspiring, you're so motivational. And I say that in turn back to them. So everyone's watching everyone's journeys. We're all feeding off of each other's energy. And once you actually get to the show, it's just, it's such a, a good, happy environment and feeling. Nice, nice. You know what, you're a very good spokeswoman. Now, just so everybody watching, we, we didn't plan these responses before. She's just, uh, I love the passion, Christy. So. No, I, that, that's what it's about. Like, I'm so passionate about everything that I do. I'm passionate about this organization. It means a lot. Like, this is my third year getting on stage. I can tell you, the past years, I've not placed top three. I've not come out with an award. And I'm raring to get back on stage and just to see everyone again, right? If yes. I can make the stage one year, I will be there supporting everyone. I just, I, I, I don't know. I love the, the family. I love the UFE family. I love everything it stands for. So, Amazing. Amazing. So before we kind of dig into your um, personal situation a little bit more and then kind of the obstacles you've overcome, um, you, I'm going to bring up this picture here and let's see if it works. There we are. Let's see. <laughs> the power team. Uh, that's you at the, uh, the Canada Pro Qualifier. Am I correct? Uh, yes. That was June yeah. uh, last year, 2018. Nice. Um, so that's you, of course, with uh, your partner in crime, Rob Starr. Yes. And you guys have um, a team. Actually, you guys have been in the running for um, – Team Starr has been in the running for UFE's personal trainer of the year, like from teams around the world. Um, you guys have been right up there in contention, I think top three. Yes. Um, and you guys are known for producing some, some really impressive – uh, people in that stable. One of them, of course, is our two-time defending uh, classic physique champion, Mike James. Yes, Mike, but, um, coming back again this year. <laughs> yeah, some some other UFE pro powerhouses, and even even people that aren't pro yet. It's it's just a really high performing uh, team. You've even got somebody that's looking uh, looking killer for mayhem coming up. Yes. So, like all these pros and, and performing at the highest level and, and, you know, some of these other prodigies that are coming up, what do you think is the, um, the secret to success for team star? Are you just producing a family of competitors that just attracts these people? Or is there some sort of, you know, uh, voodoo that Rob's doing? What's, what's going on here? We give them a magic potion. We send this thing <laughs> through Instagram and Facebook through the social media. No, I don't know. I think they genuinely see like our passion and our interest in bodybuilding as a whole, whether it be UFE, whether it be CPA, whether it be IFBB, if it's natural stream, if it's uh, open stream, like they see that we have just such a passion for bodybuilding. We're always in the gym doing our poses. We're always in the gym. Like we've been doing this. I've been competing since 2013, Rob, even before that. So they see this is a lifestyle for us. So what you're going to get with us is consistency. Another thing you're going to get with us is the honesty. So when it comes down to it at the end of the day, we we say it like it is. If someone, we've given you the tools, if unfortunately you're not following them, we're not going to be like harsh, but at the same time, we're going to be honest at the end of the day. When it comes to me specifically, because Rob does more like the fitness and new nutrition plans, that's his thing. Me, when it comes down to the posing, I have my posing clients that come here um, I have my online posting. I'll flat out say to them, I'm not going to keep saying, oh, you look good. You know, let's, we can see if you've been practicing or not, right? So I'm going to give you my honest opinion on have you been working or not? So I think people like that from us that we're not going to sugarcoat it and say, yeah, you look okay when, okay, you clearly are not necessarily following your plan as well as you could be. Uh, you're maybe looking five weeks out when you should actually be two weeks out, right? So 
we're very honest with them. They see the passion. Hopefully we're motivating them with what we're doing that we're always in the gym. Yeah, life gets busy and stuff, but you, you try and make it work, right? And we have a team environment. So we're both always there if they need to reach us. Um, I'll do the admin stuff and do the posing. And then, like I said, Rob does uh, the nutrition plans, but we come as a team and they know they can get a hold of both of us. And then I think um, coming in as well, they like um, that just because like for check-ins and stuff, it makes other like spaces and stuff more comfortable seeing that we're a team and it's not just like it's going to Rob or not just going to me. Right. So they see that they get the both of us out of this and our passion and like, we're bringing good athletes as well, right? Most of the time. So they see the quality and the consistency is there. We're bringing the level of leanness. We're bringing the muscle maturity. We're bringing the people who do transformations, right? So it really is such a passion. And I think that just, uh, we're just like magnets. They stick to us. <laughs> yeah, they, absolutely. They like that. They need that motivation, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've got, um, I've already put uh, your Instagram handle up for people who wanted to contact you. And uh, awesome. this this one will be uh, Rob's Instagram handle at team.star. Um, speaking of uh, great athletes, we've got uh, Caroline's watching uh, live here. So uh, Hi. how you doing, Caroline? Um, so getting back now to, to you, you actually just uh just came from the doctors today yeah. um and you, and you were kind of waiting on on some news right it, it was going to be a, a struggle whether you could even go to worlds and and it was it was kind of dependent on the news you got today yes. um so yeah i was i was kind of building an anticipation to hear what the answer is are you going to be competing with us this year and then tell us more about the news one way or the other well i I don't like to give up on something ahead of at least trying. So me, I've been doing my prep so far. I unfortunately had to wait. Um, usually we typically do a 12 week prep. Um, I could not start this time until uh, and do it. I was only going to be able to do a 10 week prep because I had to get the okay uh, from my surgeon, my jaw surgeon, that I would be okay to do the diet, to do the heavier physical training and that, and that it wouldn't take a toll on my jaw. So um the surgeon that I'm talking about that I had to get the clear from uh, was my jaw surgeon. So in uh, April, um, I had bilateral, so I had a double jaw joint replacement. Um, not something that you typically hear about. So you hear about like a knee and a hip replacement. This was for my jaw joints. Um, I've had jaw issues my entire life. I've already had two major jaw surgeries when I was 16. Uh, again, whenever I was 27. Uh, but since then, my whole jaw basically had the lower jaw had shifted to the right. And both of my jo joints, one was broken and one was deteriorated. I went on as long as I could to the point that I was having difficulty eating, just constant chronic pain. I still push through and do competitions. Call me crazy, but it's just like I said, a passion and a lifestyle. But finally, in uh, April, I had the surgery. So it was a very long recovery. There's still been some issues since. Um, I do have a little so bit Christy, of a So Christy, yes. let's, let's back up a second because yeah, I, I should I should back this up to last year because you were probably at the, the peak of, of your pain yes. uh, last year, right? When you competed. Yes. Um, so yeah, you basically described it. You, essentially your jaw was falling apart. Yes. Like, and you know, to, oh. to eat everybody realizes they need a jaw. So yeah. how, how the heck did you, did you overcome this and, and, and make it to the stage? Cause you looked fantastic. So one of your best physiques ever. June, I would say the, the pro qualifier was probably my best physique so far. Um, that was the one I was the most happy, happiest with. Um, after June, I'm not sure what happened with uh, my body, but that's basically when the major, major shift happened with my jaw and it moved. This surgeon couldn't even believe the difference between the x-rays that he had done. Um, so I'd say about July or August, I was getting excruciating pain, um, completely had to change my diet. I couldn't have any kind of like steak. I couldn't have crunchy foods. I was turning more into a soft diet um, and liquid Kind of foods right just to incorporate because of the jaw pain um and i needed to still function for work i enjoy training still my training even had to change a lot because i couldn't do any 
uh, weight bearing exercises because it put too much pressure on my neck and my jaw. And when I would end up with uh, migraines for three or four days after. Um, so I had, I went to see the surgeon. Um, oh, I got braces on the end of last year. So I knew when I was competing at Worlds last year, I was going to have braces on. Uh, but to me, I said, you know what, it's braces at the end of the day, are you really going to see them on stage? And it's all part of the process. Once we're pros, we only get to compete the once a year. It's not something I wanted to miss. I like doing my at least one show a year. So I said, I'm going to do it. So I managed to get through that prep. It is It was quite difficult because like I said, there's a lot of big exercises and movements that require um, like hack squats, the, the load bearing weight, doing any kind of squat. So I was limited to what I could do, but I, I still pushed through anyways. Um, I was very happy with my physique at World, although it was not as good as the pro qualifier, but I still managed to get a good placing. Um, but I think for about a week after that show, I was literally destroyed. I was in so much agony on pain medication, just from the smiling and, and the wear and tear from my, uh, from like the jaw and physique. So basically after that, I knew I, I, there was no way I could do another uh, competition, uh, do that vigorous training, just even smiling that much for that day until I had had the surgery. So I found out around the pro qualifier last year that it was going to be like almost, it was, oh no, it was before the pro qualifier, that it was a full year wait to have this jaw joint replacement surgery, just with the way our healthcare system works and uh, OHIP coverage. Um, so that's why the braces were on in anticipation for the surgery for Worlds, but I competed anyways. And then after Worlds, I still trained, but I did have to take it pretty easy because that was when the most severe pain was uh, with my jaw. So even doing like side laterals, trying to move in the gym straight away, it went up into my jaw because of how shifted it was. So my training, I had to be very, very careful, very lightweight, but there's still ways to work around this, right? Like if you're passionate about it, if this is helping you with like your mental health to get through the days, you do what you can, right? I get it if you're that severely injured that you can't do something but even five pound five pound weights doing some kind of motion and exercise right turn your brain off for that hour whenever you're in the gym don't think of anything around you right the support and the friends that you have around you as well so there's ways of making it work and then like i said the diet i kind of went to like fish because it's softer um, softer vegetables. I was eating like canned beets, canned um, peas that are squishier. So finding ways to make it work. Had the jaw surgery. Um, I was off the gym for probably about two and a half months after that. Again, trying to stick with the diet, although it was a liquid diet pretty much because I was wired shut after the surgery. Um, but then yes, leading up to when prep would have started, that's when I finally saw the surgeon again. And he gave me the okay to start prep that I would be able to do the more vigorous training and the diet and getting lean and losing the body fat was not going to be an issue to my jaw. Having nice. said that, within these 10 weeks, about 10 days ago, I had gum surgery. Um, so again, I had to go on a soft diet for that, but we made it work. I did the if it fits your macros to try and make sure that I was getting my protein in and my calories were okay, that I wasn't going to go back up and wait. And then my other issue was, I'm sure you guys can see, I have some nerve damage uh, from the surgery. So I am all about promoting body image and not having to worry about things. But at the end of the day, this is a competition. Um, if someone says, oh, I can't believe the judges would use it against you. No, they're not going to use it against you. But I mean, if you go in um, and something looks off, at the end of the day, it is about an entire physique. It is about aesthetics. Hair matters, makeup matters, um, skin matters, uh, bikini choice color matters, physique matters. Everything does matter at the end of the day. And because I did the braces on last year and I had that, not against me, but it was something negative, I didn't necessarily know that I wanted to do this show um, with this being highlighted on stage. So anyways, I saw the eye plastic surgeon today because I am going to have to have another procedure with the nerve damage on this side um, just because I can't see properly out of this eye. Um, so it has to be raised back up again. So that's going to be done after the show. That's okay. 
Um, but I got a little Botox in on this side. <laughs> so it's going to even it out a little bit. Um, I'll look once I frown, I'll look a little bit more like this, but not looking like I'm frowning. But I did get the okay from him and from the surgeon that I will be able to do the competition. So I'm very, very, very excited <laughs> that I can get on stage. So my body is ready. My mind is ready. Everything is going to be ready. So nice. Nice. So, um, I'm looking at a comment from uh, Patricia here and she says, talk about strong, beautiful, no excuses woman. And then that's kind of the, um, it's kind of the point of why it brought you on here. And, and I, you know, I, I don't think, I, I think our pros perform at a high level um, that they, they take this seriously as, as athletes and um, they are all extremely motivated people. But UFE, we've got the, the the 90 day challenge. We've got novices. We've got a lot of other competitors um, who set themselves up for excuses. And um, I, I thought your story would be just incredible because I can't tell you how many people are like, ah, oh, you know, I, I I hurt my wrist and I can't work out as hard as I was supposed to be, or some obscure, you know medical thing comes up, or you know, I had the flu and I couldn't eat properly for a bit. Or, you know, my... I can't stick to my diet, but I'm going to use another excuse. No. <laughs> yeah, so all, all these excuses come up, and I, I don't want to, like, attack anyone's individual excuses, but what I do want to... What I wanted to sh do with your story here is is just share, like, the, the, the passion you have. There's, you know, a single-minded focus. You, you want yes. to do something, and you're going to do yes. <laughs> whatever it takes... To get there and i think a lot a lot of people can can just learn from setting a goal and sticking to it no matter what now at some point the doctor could have said hey you know what your jaw's falling apart there's yeah. nothing we can do and then you're kind of you know out of luck yes. but in your case you did whatever needed to be done the doctor at least was able to fix stuff you've got obstacles even now with the nerve damage and yeah. you're like heck i am going to try and make it to the stage no matter what and I, I just think it's so inspiring and i want um a lot of people to just listen to these challenges just think about what you were going through and and kind of apply it to their own situation and some people you know have real valid excuses but i just thought this would be very inspiring um for for not just for women but for for men and women who who are going through something and just need to kind of be like, you know what, if I've got a single minded focus and I'm dedicated to my goal and I'm passionate, yes. I'll do what it takes to reach that goal, you know, and then you've committed to yourself and you make these shows. And, and, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm just very proud to have you as one of our pros. I think yourself and, and Rob are, are, you know, some of our best advocates. So, um, and I guess I guess what I'll close out with is is going, you know, kind of asking what what are your plans now for competition? You alluded to you're competing this year and, and next year. What are kind of your overall plans and and your goals with with placing and, and the industry in general? To win. No. <laughs> good one. I'm good go one. This year and step on stage, having overcome all this and win. <laughs> That yeah. is my goal. I always say, oh, I'd like to get top three. I would like to win this year. <laughs> awesome. At the end of the day, I I will be bringing 100% my best physique. 100%. So obviously, I would like to get on stage and win. I like the experience regardless, but I would like to get on stage and win. Uh, for next year, um, I, the reason I said I'm actually looking forward to next year is because one of the things that we found out recently uh, is UFE for next year is going to be having the uh, master's category at 40 plus for pros. And I turn 40 next year. <laughs> so that, <laughs> there has you go. Me, that has me super excited. Now I think I miss it by literally a month, but that's okay. 2021. <laughs> there you go. Like I plan that far ahead. <laughs> nice. Um, that's amazing. So yeah, you're going to be competing at the UFE World Championships November 9th yes. in Toronto. So people can get their tickets to watch you. You'll be in the uh, 6 p.m. pro show. Yes. Along with your partner in crime, Rob Star. And our team. Be, uh, what's that? 
and our team and and the team yeah, yeah. and then yours and you've got the the defending champion in the house which is going to be exciting to see if he can uh i guess this will be a, a three-peat if he can do it that it would be yeah so that'll make him one of our one of our winningest pros yet. we've had a three-peater okay and we've had one we've only had i think three or four three-peaters yes and we've only had one four-peater so he's got okay. this well, year and then another one <laughs> he's coming so it's gonna be it yeah, so it's going to be an exciting show. You're there to win. It's going to be um, exciting to see how this all turns out with you on stage. Yes. Um, and there's exactly. lots of members of uh, Team Star that we shouldn't overlook, so people can check out uh, the Team Star Instagram. And, yes. of course, people can buy tickets to watch all you guys compete November 9th. It's at the uh, CBC Glen Gold Studio, ticketscene.ca. So, uh, thank you link as well. Now that I'm a hundred percent doing it, I'll post yeah. the link on my, uh, on my Instagram as well. Awesome. Well, Chrissy, thank you so much. Um, I, I think it's been uh, very inspirational to hear your challenges and, and how you've overcome. And I'm super excited. I was nervous up until today, figuring out, you know, is she going to be able to compete or not? Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm glad the news was good for you. So. I know, and I'm glad it came on today's date doing this. It's exciting. <laughs> awesome. So we'll see uh, you and, and one of your uh, your protégés uh, at Mayhem. We have three. Oh, three protégés. Three, yes. Amazing. So we'll yes. see them at Mayhem this Saturday. Uh, those tickets available at Ticket Scene as well. And then we'll see the woman herself live in toronto november 9th ticketscene.ca for the tickets <laughs> awesome thanks again christy hey thank you okay